Small circles of light, like those cast by street lamps, brighten in a ring. Aggie runs round the circle, an umbrella held over her head. Lights brighten on Ernestine behind the table. She picks up a pair of pale pink girl's shoes and makes them dance. My name is Pauline Brandt. I'm an audio describer in the theatre. And basically what that is, is scripting between dialogue of a play, all the physicality that happens on the stage. So you are in fact creating a little sketch for blind and visually impaired audiences. I'd never heard of it in my life. My background was broadcasting. I was an arts news reporter. So my heart was always in the arts but I was very used to scripting and producing material. I did an intensive um, three-month course where I completed the certificate in audio description skills and it was run by a charity called Seer Voice. I think you have to have a good sense of timing, you need to have good editorial skills, you need to have good communication skills, you need to be able to liaise uh, and work as a team and be able to work on your own as well. The first thing I need to do is to see the play, to get a, a feel for the characters and the set. And what I do is sit very quietly with a notebook and I sketch people from top to toe. How tall are they? What's their hair like? Is it short? Is it long? Is it um, crimped? Uh, what, what's their eye line like? What's their nose like? The mouth? And not only that, expressions and nuances. Do they fidget? Do they slouch? You start to look at people in a lot more detail and it's the little things that say a lot more about a character. The job is about precision and it's also about a lightness of touch as well because you don't want to be talking in a person's ear too much. <laughs> On to the next scene and a silver Christmas tree adorns the left of the living room. Paper chains hang in three loops on the back wall. Susan goes to the door and Barry steps in. Journalism skills are actually a good background, but people have come from all sorts of backgrounds for this. You know, increasingly it could be used in more and more contexts and for more and more people. Paintings, sculpture, architecture and dance. Something like a hundred people a day in this country are diagnosed with some kind of sight problem. And there's macular degeneration which happens as people get older. People are very, very pleased that this service exists. I mean, I've heard people say that it's actually been quite transformative. The idea is to increase access and not just to tick a box which says Disability Discrimination Act. Um, visually impaired people need to feel very welcome in the theatre and the onus is on us to produce something which is of a high quality. It seems like a very good marrying of my skills in broadcasting uh, with a love for the theatre and the arts. Uh, the best description that I've heard is a cross between poetry and live broadcast. And I think that just about sums it up. Well, that's the end of the introductory notes. Please keep your headsets switched on. And the production is due to start shortly. Thank you.